Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Super Sonic JB, and today is Valentine's Day, which means it's that time of year again, folks. Time to play through some Persona 5 just to see that one scene of Joker getting beat up by his harem. I'll see you later, if you survive. For real though, today's Valentine's Day, and normally for Valentine's Day, you either go out with your loved one or you're sitting at home eating ice cream. Unfortunately, I'm out of ice cream right now. But you know what, at least Valentine's Day gives me an excuse to actually play through a visual novel. But what should I play? You know what, no, instead of playing through a visual novel, I think I'm gonna make my very own visual novel. Hmm, what should I call it though? Oh, hello there, you must be a new student. Nice to meet ya. I'm a typical player type of character who is sweet to you and will shower you with gifts. And I'm the prince type of character who is filthy rich and will treat you like a true lady. I'll also challenge any romantic rivals to a duel if they are foolish enough to get in my way. So, you wanna go out with me, cutie? Oh no, I'm sure they'd much rather prefer a fine gentleman such as myself. Aw, oh, thanks. You're so awesome. How could this happen to me? I've made my mistakes. Got nowhere to run. The night goes on as I'm fading away. It's okay. We can still be friends, I guess. Why, thank you, my dear lady. It means the world to me. Okay, this game kind of sucks. Maybe we should play Princess Evangel instead. There's a lot of visual novels out there. Some good, and some are like this. But there was this one visual novel that stood up from the rest, but everything changed after the Fire Nation attacked. Oh, whoops, I was reading the wrong script there. Uh, let me try that again. <clears throat> See this game right here? This was the first visual novel I was ever introduced to. Princess Evangel is a visual novel that was created by Moonstone back in 2011 and was later picked up by Manga Gamer and released worldwide in 2015. Its story revolves around a poor guy who ends up becoming the only boy in an all-girls school. So it's basically showman sample, but without the weird muscle fetish. Or infinite Stratos, but without the mechs. So yeah, it's one of those storylines. But yeah, this was actually the first visual novel I was ever introduced to. I saw videos of it on YouTube back in the day, and it looked like a fun game to play through. And since today is Valentine's Day, and since it's basically a tradition here for me to review a visual novel on this day, I thought I'd take a look at this game and actually play through it. Does it still hold up in 2023 though? Let's find out. Princess Evangel. Wait, I thought we were playing Cat Girls from My Sweet Dream. So yeah, this is Princess Evangel. And right off the bat, I gotta say, I really like the title screen here. The art style looks great and the music is very nice too. Now let me just say this off the bat, this game is very long and contains 26 chapters so trying to make an in-depth review on this game was pretty frustrating not gonna lie. Which is why I won't be going over every single moment in this game cause then this video would drag on for far too long. But since this is a game that kinda holds a special place in my heart, I'll at least give descriptions on what each chapter is like and what route I ended up taking. So without further ado, let's take a look at this visual novel called Princess Evangel. Wait, there's a chapter zero? What is this, an RPG? <laughs> Anyways, the game starts off in a pretty dark and brutal way. Our main protagonist is a young guy named Messiah Okanaji. Yep, unfortunately you can't change the main character's name in this game, so I can't change his name to like Derpy Buttface 69 or something. What a bummer, am I right? Messiah lives in a very poor old apartment building with his deadbeat father. His father has no job and is in severe debt, and Messiah has been working non-stop to help pay for essential goods like food and shelter. And it's no surprise to anyone with the brain, My doctor says I have one. But Messiah hates his dad big time. Apparently his mom divorced this guy and wanted Messiah and her to run away and live a happy life somewhere else. But Messiah was a complete idiot and stayed behind because he was worried that his dad couldn't take care of himself. I mean, this was such a dumb decision that he made here. If that was me, I would have been like, So long, sucker! But no, he ends up staying with his deadbeat father and only ends up suffering for it. And when he comes home one day, he finds a note that says his father took a vacation and will probably never return. So yeah, he went down to the street to get some milk. And to make it even worse, he passed it down all his debt he owes to Messiah. And it turns out all the debt he owes is for the Mafia, and they arrive at the apartment to collect it from us. 
Also, just look at how weird these guys look. Especially spiky hair here. It looks like that porcupine guy from that one episode of Ben 10. Thankfully, Messiah manages to escape from them and runs into a new area. He spends the last bit of his money on food and ends up giving half of it to a lonely cat. And while walking a bit, he sees some older women capturing a young lady. So this is where you get to choose to either help her or ignore her. Now I chose to help her, but I'm not sure if ignoring her would have changed the game's story or not. I could probably end right there and be like, you chose not to interfere and end up running away like a baby until the Mafia found you and buried you along with all those copies of E.T. on the Atari. Sheesh, thank God I chose to help her and the two of us managed to escape in one piece. So this girl is named Rise Rose, Ro, 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 I don't know, Amy Rose? And she's basically the main girl in this game they're going to be spending a lot of time with. She thanks us for saving her and takes us to a fancy restaurant where we can finally get a good meal. Risei tries to ask us an important question, but before she can, Masai ends up looking at today's winning lottery numbers. Since his father forced him to buy a lottery ticket earlier, and it turns out, he won the lottery. And then he does another dumb move of ditching the sweet, kind, beautiful Risei so that he can quickly cash in his ticket. But since it's late at night, the place to get the ticket is closed. So he goes back to Risei at the restaurant. Yeah, this part made me cringe a bit. Like, I get it, you want a lot of you, that's huge and everything, but at least stay with Risei until she goes home for the night. Eventually, Messiah does make it back to the restaurant to talk more Risei, but then sees that those guys from the Mafia are harassing her. Gasp! So Messiah stands up for her and yeets the porcupine dude out of here, and the Mafia guys retreat. Hooray, he finally made a good decision! But then something bad happens. Messiah loses his lottery ticket to the cat he fed earlier, who runs away with the ticket after he tries to retrieve it. So he starts to lose hope in his life, but then Risei asks him the question she was trying to say earlier. She asks us to go to her all-female school called Vincennes, I am sorry if I'm pronouncing that, but whatever, Academy. And then we get the typical anime intro with cool music playing. Pretty nice intro overall. And yeah, since Messiah will be homeless unless he takes his opportunity, he enrolls as the first male student in an all-girls school. And that's the end. For chapter zero, at least. Yeah, this is going to be a long review. I love how every time you enter a new chapter, stuff like this happens. This really is an anime, huh? Yeah, we start off our new school life at Bansena Academy. And from here on out, this is how this game works. This is a day-to-day -day calendar system. Each day you do something new and interact with some of the girls that you can romance. And as long as everything goes well, you get to stay at the school. However, your fate will be decided by a majority vote from the students, if they want to become a boy slash girl co-ed school or not. Rise was looking for a guy to become the school's first male student, and he saw potential in me. Thank you! Finally somebody gets me! And yeah, there's not really a lot of people attending the school anymore because it's so expensive, so that's the main reason why they want to go co-ed here. Throughout Chapter 1, we're introduced to other characters, like Rise's grandmother, Sister Mishima, Kazuya Mishima wins. Marika, the student council president, Mitsuki, Ritsuko, Time Me the News Reporter, and everyone's favorite, student number one! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> but yeah, nothing huge happens in this chapter except students don't liking the fact that a boy is here, so on to chapter two. In the next chapter, we wake up one morning to see Marika and Mitsuki come to our room because they want to inspect our room to make sure we're not hiding anything dirty. You know, like porn magazines, because it's an anime game. So of course they'd have a scene like this. They even have me shirt down to my boxers and have me leave the room because they want to inspect my clothes and search the room in private. What is wrong with these girls? So Masai ends up going outside in his boxers and ends up running into this girl named Muriko and her little friend, this cat lemur weasel thing named Panterbell. Yeah, I have no clue what this thing is, but he's basically the game's mascot and he's pretty friendly too, so who might argue? And thankfully, Ruriko is a very friendly girl who actually likes having a boy at this school. She wants to learn more about men, so add another girl to my harem. Unfortunately, when we go back to our room, we run into a bunch of girls in the hallway, and they turn and scream and yell things to Messiah. Thankfully, Marika and Mitsuki actually help me out and tell everyone that it wasn't my fault. Finally, something good happens to me! Now, Risei and I are trying to get new people to join the White Lily Society, since everyone else dropped out in the last chapter. And it's not going super well, but more on this later. The main focus on this chapter is Messiah reuniting with his childhood friend Chiho, who is so happy to see him. <laughs> Luvia, is that you? 
Yeah, so it turns out Chiho is really mad at Messiah because according to him, him and his dad left their old hometown, escaped from the Mafia, and Messiah was supposed to visit Chiho that day, but he was afraid that the goons might attack her if they found out she was a friend of his. And later he tries to explain his whole story to Chiho with help from Risei and Ruriko, but then she slaps me again! <laughs> Alright girl, you can forget me ever playing through your route. At the start of the next chapter, Chio and I end up getting yelled at by the teachers again, but they give us one more chance to settle our differences. So Risei, Ruriko, and I come up with this weird plan that sounded pretty dumb and risky when I first heard about it. Since Chio doesn't fully believe in Messiah's story about the Mafia after us, the plan is for Messiah to take her outside the school grounds to that restaurant where he had a date with Risei earlier and bait out the goons to see if they try and attack Chiho while Messiah runs away and hides. And this will make her believe our story about the goons? What? Yeah, this plan is crazy, but Ruriko calls out the bodyguard, who will step in to help in case things get crazy. Unfortunately, the normal bodyguard that she knows is busy at the moment, so they end up sending a rookie bodyguard to help out. And at first, he acts all brave when the goons show up, but then the porcupine dude from Ben 10 brings out a gun, and the bodyguard runs away like a scaredy baby. Reminds me of that time I had a bodyguard. Alright bodyguard, I need you to protect me for that guy over there. Don't worry sir, I'm a professional. I got this. Hey, you- Oh wait, shit, is that a gun? Fuck, shit, fuck, I'm, I'm not dealing with this! I'm just- I'm gonna run away and scream. Uh, but what about me? That guy has a gun! Sorry kid, but you a gun! Thankfully Messiah managed to save Chiho. I'll be in a weird way. He ends up seeing the cat that had his lottery ticket and dies at it. He ends up smacking his skull against the porcupine dude's crotch. And down goes the goon! Down goes the goon! And the goons end up retreating again. So Messiah ends up saving Chiho and she believes his story and accepts his apology. But that's not all because he ends up finding his lottery ticket in a pile of puke that the cat hurled up. So he plans on cashing it in tomorrow and paying those goons back for all the debt his old man owes. Also, Tommy was at the restaurant and ends up making a new story on everything that happened that night. But did she have to use that picture? And the chapter ends with Chiyo joining the White Lily Society along with Ruriko. Also, Risa and Chiyo get into an argument because they clearly both have feelings for Messiah. And then they try to strangle him because Ruriko makes a dirty joke by accident. But it turns out she was just talking about my hand. Ruriko, you're awesome girl, but please, watch what you say! At the beginning of the next chapter, Messiah and Risa are at gym class. The class is playing softball, and someone ends up hitting the ball right in Messiah's hands, hurting his hand pretty badly, but thankfully Risei takes us to the nurse's office, because she actually cares about him. Also, I just want to say, dang, Risei looks cute in that outfit! It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Now, during this chapter, Mitsuki is kind of annoying, not gonna lie. He ends up showing up during our meeting, and acts cold towards everyone, because they're trying to reform the White Lily Society, and she tries to start a fight with Risei, and then she ends up sending an email to Messiah using someone else's phone without their permission, saying that Chiho is in danger, which leads him to go to Chiho's classroom and entering right as the girls are changing, which of course doesn't end well. So yeah, she's done a lot of bad things in this chapter, all because she doesn't like Messiah. How rude. Later on, Risei shows us this approval chart that shows how the students feel about Messiah, and the results have gone up since the whole saving Shio from the Mafia incident. I mean, sure, it's only a small portion of votes going up, but hey, I'll take what I can get. So the May Festival is coming up soon, which is a big dance that lasts all night, and the three girls each want to dance with Messiah, but they argue a bit on who will be the first person he dances with. I mean, I'll dance with all three of you, but I'll even admit, Risei is my favorite, so I'd honestly choose to dance with her first. Please don't hurt me, Shio, I have family to feed. Oh wait, he ditched me. And at the end of the chapter, we're introduced to a new character. Her name is Konomi, and she's only an intermediary course student, meaning that she's younger than everyone else in this game. So she's basically the lolly character of this game. And no surprise, she's not a big fan of Messiah, and she even calls me a tentatera serpent. She's also really obsessed with Ritsuko, because she's like a big sister to her. Konomi still thinks that Messiah purposely peeked on the girls changing earlier, even though it's proven to be a setup by someone else, but thankfully Ritsuko actually stands up for us. And then Messiah did something really funny as Konomi looked deep into his eyes to see if he truly looks like a bad guy. And then she gets nervous and runs away screaming that she'll get pregnant if she looks into a guy's eyes for too long. Man, what is with anime and pregnancy logic? As for who gets to dance with Messiah at the dance, Ruriko suggests we turn it into a game where each person puts their name into an easter egg and whoever's egg you find is who you'll dance with. Come on baby, give me Risei's egg! That sounded kinda weird. 
In the next chapter, everyone hides their Easter eggs along the school grounds. Of course, some of the girls want to know where we'll be hiding ours, but you know. I ain't no snitch. So I don't tell them anything. But while Messiah hides his egg the next day, Kenobi ends up seeing where he hid his egg, which is up in a tree. And when she climbs up to get it, she gets scared and realizes she can't get down. And she ends up falling out of the tree, but luckily Messiah manages to catch her. And of course, Tammy gets a pick of that, because why not? And yeah, the reason why Konomi wanted our egg was because she didn't want Ritsuko to come across it. So to dance, we end up dancing with Konomi, but she shows up in the dance in her fighting outfit, and she faints when we try to dance with her. But forget about her, because in this chapter, we meet one of the best girls in the entire game. This is Ayaka, and she's Ritsuko's older sister, and she asks us to dance with her, and she flirts with us a ton too. But before we can get that phone number, she runs off. And then we find out that Messiah found Ritsuko's egg, so he gets to dance with her in the end. Not sure if she was happy about that or not, but whatever. And to end out this chapter, Risei, Chiho, and Ibi Ruriko try to forcibly dance with Messiah. That is one lucky guy. Did my man really just make a Dragon Ball Z reference? Really, girl, at least let him finish next time. In the next chapter, things started to get spicy. Well, spicier than what we've already seen anyways. Messiah ends up finding a love letter in his shoebox, and the person who wrote it wants to meet up with him after class. Unfortunately, he shows up late and doesn't end up finding out who she is. But then the next day, he gets another love letter telling him where she wants to meet up next. This cycle continues for a few days, but then Messiah gets a really weird request from her to come to Maria. <laughs> Maria! No, not that Maria Shadow, Maria Hall. And she wants him to remove his clothes and show her his... Manga collection. Yeah, let's go with that. But yeah, it turns out the mystery girl was Ayaka, and she was just pulling a prank on Messiah. And then a bunch of girls run into Maria Hall and see Messiah in his boxers and yell at him. Ayaka admits it was her fault, and everyone gets mad at her, which yeah, is perfectly understandable. And later on, Ritsuko gets a text from Ayaka that says that she's been kidnapped by gangsters and needs help. Ritsuko doesn't believe this and thinks it's a prank, but Messiah says they should still look into it to see if it's real or not. We ask the head mistress, aka Ritsuko and Ayaka's mother, if we can leave the school grounds to look for her, but she doesn't believe this to be real, but she does let us go look for her. And yeah, it turns out Ayaka really was kidnapped by the goons from earlier, and they plan to hold her ransom. But when they call her dad up to demand money for her return, he doesn't believe it's a true kidnapping, and thinks it's another one of Ayaka's pranks. They hold her up in Messiah's old apartment, and Messiah manages to sneak in through the secret entrance and saves Ayaka from the goons. And she later apologizes to both of them. Turns out the reason why she snuck out of the school grounds was to get Messiah an apology cake, and Messiah forgives her in the end. And later, Ayaka joins the White Lily Society. Now let me just say this, so far I'm actually really enjoying this game. It has a great storyline so far with great characters, and the art style and music are really good too. But we still got a ton of chapters to play through, so let's continue. Chapter 7 mainly has to spend time with Konomi. In this chapter, Messiah and Ayaka decided they want to teach sex education to Konomi because she never pays attention in health class and believes that men can get women pregnant by just looking into their eyes. Where'd you get that idea from? A manga? <laughs> oh wait, she actually did. Huh. Okay then, Konomi actually does listen to Messiah's lecture even if she gets really nervous while listening to it. Later she wants to test Messiah's sexual feelings, and has us come to the bathhouse with her, because of course, anything anime related has to have at least one bathhouse scene, am I right? And the two of them take a bath together, and have a true heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Messiah teaches her more about the 18 plus stuff, and she finally starts to understand it all. But then a random earthquake happens, and the power goes out, and we get stuck in the bathhouse. Konomi is scared of the dark too, but Messiah manages to comfort her, and they end up falling asleep, and get rescued in the morning. Also, I should mention it's revealed that Messiah has a scar on his back, and he doesn't know where it came from. Maybe this will be important later on, but as of now, I'm not sure. Anyways, Konomi finally sucks Messiah for being a good guy, but then she says that the two of us had a naked date, and the other girls start to strangle Messiah again. Yeah, like I said earlier, what a lucky guy. The next chapter kicks off summertime. We get to see everyone in their summer outfits. Don't get too excited, you weirdos. They're literally the same outfits, but short sleeve. So in this chapter, the members of the White Lotus Society need a new plan to get that approval rating up because they're running out of time. So we end up making a leaflet, which here is a definition in case you're unfamiliar with it. This leaflet will help the students of Boston Oz get to know more about Messiah. And well, the girls actually end up writing the article for him, and they end up including all their ideas together, which leads to a lot of confusion. 
So this plan ends up failing completely. So thanks a lot, girls. I missed the part where that's my problem. But the next day we come up with this even more ridiculous plan where the girls want to take pictures of Messiah without a shirt on, hoping to impress some of the students with his rock hard muscles. Why is this a plan? The game even gives you the option to choose. And I'll be completely honest here, I was terrified I'd make the wrong decision here that might give me a bad ending or something. So I ended up saving my game here just in case. I of course went with the dumb choice and undressed, and this caused all the girls to be horny. Ruriko is touching me, and Ayaka has a smug look in her face that makes me wish the horny police would leave me alone already. And to no one's surprise, when the pics of shirtless messiah get uploaded, we get into trouble with the headmistress. And she punishes us by not letting the white lord society be able to post certain things online. So in a nutshell, it's like Sony censoring things in their games. Thankfully, something good finally goes in our way as Messiah gets a visitor, and this visitor runs a senior citizen center that Messiah used to volunteer for, and asks him to come back and volunteer there, which he does, and Tammy comes along to make a news article about it. And yeah, this event causes Messiah's approval rating to go up even more. Hooray! There is a small problem though. It looks like Marika's grandmother is having Marika try to vandalize Messiah's image, because she doesn't want the school to reform. Marika seems to be against this a little, but does as her grandma says, so we'll see what she's up to later. In the next chapter, the gang decides to go outside school grounds to teach Ruriko more about the outside world. She seems to be nervous about something, and when we go out for lunch at the same restaurant but before again, seriously, was there anywhere else to eat around here? Like, my god! Here Ruriko reveals that she has an arranged marriage, and her father is having her marry a rich, powerful businessman's son. However, she says she doesn't really have any feelings for him, and she even straight up says that she'd rather marry Messiah instead. She also says that her fiancé scares her a little, because she can tell he hides his anger. Messiah and the others tell Ruriko she should reject the marriage if she truly doesn't love him, and she is happy her friends have her back, and she plans to reject the marriage. Also, Ayaka takes us to a lingerie store to troll Messiah. You really are a naughty girl, aren't you? A few days later, Ruriko tells us that she spoke to her family and said that she is not getting married yet. But her father gets mad at this and goes to school to complain to the board. Later, the headmistress calls us to her office and says that Ruriko's father wants to pull her out of school because of her sudden change in behavior. Everyone argues about this, but it doesn't end there. Ruriko told her father that she loved another boy, and clearly we know who that is. Squidward, of course. When my tear ducks give issue, I can't use just any tissue. I need four plies. But for real, she loves Messiah, and this angers the headmistress and Ruriko's father. And yeah, it turns out her father provides the school with a lot of money. But he states that he will keep her in the school, but only if Messiah leaves. All the girls disagree with this, but since Ruriko's father is a very rich and powerful man here, we can't argue. And the chapter ends with us being escorted to our room, where we'll be sentenced to leave in three days. And in the next chapter, Messiah is stuck under house arrest until he leaves the school. The other girls have also been placed under house arrest, but they managed to sneak out and get into Messiah's room through the balcony. We all try to come up with a plan to stop the explosion, and we end up coming with a majority vote idea, where all the students vote if Messiah should get expelled or should stay. Tammy gets the whole story uploaded into the paper to show the students that this truly is an unfair situation. Side note here, but it's funny, so I thought I'd mention it. But one time, the guard who was looking after Messiah heard all of us talking in the room and came in to check in on us. So Messiah had everyone hide, and he ended up pushing Chiho into the closet and got a fine view of her. <laughs> There was no need for me to mention that, I just thought it was funny, so... Okay, back to the story. The headmistress does allow the vote to happen, but she says it won't change anything. On the last day of the vote, we get a surprise. Turns out Mitsuki here ended up putting a third option on the voters page, saying no opinion. And yeah, this option gets the most votes, so we're still not safe from being expelled, even if the rest of the results say they don't want Messiah to be expelled. Risei is furious and calls out Mitsuki for this, which causes Mitsuki to run away. But before anyone goes after her, we're greeted by Ruriko's parents and her fiance. Ruriko! 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 And yeah, this is where we see him show his true colors. And he freaks out and screams at Ruriko, but Messiah manages to protect her. Yeah, he was batshit crazy. Ruriko's father is even shocked at how horrible a person he is. Thankfully, Ruriko stands up for herself and says that she'll never love him, and he starts crying like Waluigi. 
And then the guards escort him out, and Ruriko's father is impressed with Messiah standing up for his daughter. And then he says that he'll keep her at the school, and says Messiah is a good man and should stay too. Risa ends up making a second vote without the no opinion option this time, and everyone is in favor of keeping Messiah at the school. Even the headmistress accepts it, and bam, we get to continue our life in school. In chapter 11, we end up doing some volunteer work at the school's pool, and we get some... fan service on the side. It's also revealed in this chapter that Risei had a crush on a boy that she met as a kid, and Chio theorizes that this boy was Messiah because of how Risei describes him. There's also an incident where Risei almost died in a fire at a fireworks festival, but this mysterious boy saves her. We'll probably learn more about this event later on in the story, so for now, let's move on. A random peeping Tom ends up taking pics of the girls in swimsuits, and Messiah and Konomi end up chasing after him. But when Messiah catches him, he pulls a knife out on him, and Messiah has this weird, dark, disturbing image appear in his head. That looks like something straight out of the creepypasta. And he loses it and starts punching the intruder until thankfully the guard takes him away. And this event caused the Messiah to feel awful for what he's done. In the next chapter we end up getting an email from Marika to meet up with her after class. And when we do she starts acting really weird. She takes off her clothes and says that she's in love with Messiah. But Messiah says he ain't no simp for her so she takes it personally and screams. It says that Messiah tried to attack her. This makes the guard angry and she informs the headmistress, who says that she's going to expel Messiah immediately. Man, this woman is like a judge that always says you're guilty! Order in my court! Order, order in my court! You, 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 you're guilty! Death, 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 death penalty! When word spreads around the school about the incident, the students start to hate on Messiah again. But thankfully, Rise and the others got my back and are ready to defend me. Looks like Rise is a fan of Shaolin Showdown. I challenge you to a Shaolin Showdown! We end up confronting Marika in the headmistress office about this event, but she doesn't back down and still says the Messiah attacked her. But she doesn't have any proof, so our team has to find a way to fix this mess within three days. Rise thinks that Mitsuki is the true mastermind behind this plan, and when she talks to her one day after class, she basically admits it. One evening, Messiah sneaks out of his room to meet up with Rise, who is trying to speak to Mitsuki again. Sheesh, the guard here is terrible. How did he not see me sneaking out again? Just imagine security like that in real life. <laughs> hmm, must have been the wind. Sucker. And Messiah and Risa confront Mitsuki, who eventually tells us that yeah, the whole situation was a lie because they wanted Messiah to leave the school. Risa and Mitsuki have a heart to heart, and she even apologizes to me. Then we try to speak to Marika, but we can't find her anywhere until we see her standing at the top of the church looking awfully depressed. Yeah, this won't end well, will it? So yeah, at the beginning of the next chapter, Marika is attending suicide. But Risei, Mitsuki, and I manage to talk her out of it. But then the wind pulls her off the edge, but thankfully Messiah catches her in time. However, he has nothing to cling on to, so he starts falling too. But Risei and Mitsuki save them, and Marika uses her phone to call for help. She also gets a call from her grandmother, and she does the right thing, and tells her grandmother she's not her puppet anymore, and hangs up on her. So she calls the school for help, and we're all saved. I mean, yeah, the situation was scary, but it wasn't as scary as when I was hanging off a cliff. Help me, I'm falling! Dude, it's literally a five-inch drop. Pussy. So in the end, Marika apologizes to Messiah, and admits her faults the next day to the whole school. Her grandmother also shows up, but she still stands up for her, and says that she won't do bad things like that ever again. And although her grandmother is upset, she accepts Marika's decision in the end. So yeah, Messiah's name is cleared and later on in the chapter, the premiere Judgment Day happens. And it's unanimous, Messiah gets to stay for the rest of the year. Hooray! Time to celebrate! In the next chapter, it's about to be summer break and everyone has plans to visit their families. Before everyone leaves, the girls come over to Messiah's room to play the game of life. And yes, I'm referring to the actual board game, of course. Ayaka makes a rule saying that whoever wins gets to kiss Messiah. And even though some of them are hesitant about this, they end up agreeing and play the game. And the game goes perfectly fine at first, but then the storm happening outside knocks the power out, so we decide to finish the game by counting our money to see who won. We light some candles to see better, because clearly these old bones ain't gonna have a decent flashlight on them. But Messiah ends up getting scared while looking into the candle's fire, and the reason he's afraid of it was because of that weird memory he had that looks like a pasta that I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, Konomi ends up getting scared by the thunder outside and crashes into the board, sending the money everywhere. So we never end up finding out who won the game. Bayaka, being the naughty girl she is, says that the winner of the game is whoever kisses Messiah first. So we get kissed by all the girls here. Now 
lovely. Later that night, as Messiah is sleeping, he has a nightmare where his room catches on fire with the girls in it. He manages to get out, but sees this mysterious woman holding a knife standing over him. Yeah, I'll be real here. This moment is really dark and disturbing. There's also this unknown girl he keeps speaking to who he's trying to protect, and we'll find out her true identity later, though it's pretty obvious who she is. Thankfully, Messiah ends up waking up from the nightmare. Anyways, two weeks pass and most of the girls are back home. Chio wants to do something fun, so we do a test of courage challenge where one person at a time goes into the church in the dark with a lit candle and finds a tag hidden somewhere. And yeah, this doesn't end well with Messiah, because he gets scared and ends up falling down the stairs and hitting his head. And then he continues to dream about the fire incident, and he finally gets to see who the unknown girl is. OMG Zelda, is that you? And thankfully Chiyo and the others find Messiah and help nurse him back to health. So yeah, overall this was an interesting chapter. That felt like a horror story. In the next chapter, man I'm getting sick of saying that, but there's so many chapters in this game so it's bound to happen. Messiah finally gets out of the hospital after he got his head injury, and just in time because it's time for the school's camping trip up the mountain. However, the very sweet and kind headmistress says that Messiah is still on house arrest and can't go. This woman is really getting on my nerves right now. But as if fate would have it, one of the teachers who was supposed to drive the boat at the lake falls ill, and Messiah volunteers to do the job as community service. But he'll have to come back to his dorm at night time. So we head up to the mountain after a long hike, and everyone goes swimming in the lake. Except Messiah, because he's scared everyone will see the scar on his back that he got while protecting Risei during the fire incident. It's in this chapter where Sister Mishima is very interested in your love life. Hey girl, my love life is none of your business. <laughs> Get it? None of your business and she's a nun? <laughs> that was terrible. But for real though, this is the point in the game where you choose who you want to start a relationship with. Man, I feel all the pressure in the world here with this decision. Hey, buddy. Better choose wisely, or else people on their own that might try to cancel you. We wouldn't like that now, would we? So, in the end, I decided to go with the Risei route. Now, yes, I'm sure some people are going to argue and get their torches and pitchforks ready because I didn't choose the girl they wanted. But hey, it's my playthrough, so screw you. Or you're welcome if you want me to do this. Each route lasts many chapters, so if I were to talk about every character's route in this review, I'd probably lose my mind this video will last four times longer than it already has. Now, in the original version of Princess Fangio, you only had four routes, but now, in a W Happiness version, you can date any of the nine girls. Well, like I said, I'm doing the Risei route, so this is how it went. In the next chapter, the White Lotus Society and the Red Rose Society hold a cooking competition to see who makes a better tasting portion of a ramen dish. But in the end, the result is a tie because people couldn't tell the difference between the two dishes. I mean, I'm just happy to eat, period, so who cares? So everyone is preparing for the end of summer stargazing night, and the girls tell Messiah where their seats are located at so that he can sit with them. Since I'm doing the Rise route, I got to sit with her and enjoy the beautiful night sky while laying down next to her. And she invited me to go to this festival tomorrow night with her, so this should be fun. In the next chapter, Rise and I go to the festival and participate in some games, eat some great food, and Messiah finally reveals to Rise that he was the boy Rise met at the festival years ago. And this blows her mind. But for real, Rise is really happy to hear this news, and Messiah and her believe it was really fate that brought them back together the night she found him. Now, not much else happens in this chapter, it's overall pretty short, but wow, it truly was heartwarming to play through this. So in the next chapter, the girls still want to get some of the votes for school integration to a higher amount. Since the school's 97th Academy Bell Festival is coming up, the White Lily Society decides to make the festival openness. Wait, openness? Like, Ness the video game character? Okay, what they mean is they want the festival to be open to the entire public, meaning that anyone including men, they come to the school. However, we're not sure how the other students will feel about this, so Risei comes up with a plan for Messiah and her to date. Oh, Risei, I'm flattered you would want to be my... pretend boyfriend? Uh, I didn't know this game shared the same universe as Random Girlfriend. The reason why we're going to pretend date is to make the students get jealous and want to find love themselves, and at the festival, it can happen since it's open to the public. We tell the others about this fake dating thing, and Chiyo is definitely jealous about it, but hides it. Come on girl, you know I hate tsundere's. We also let the headmistress know about our plan, and she's supposed to inform the students about this on the webpage, but she just so happens to forget to do this after we started fake dating. So it causes a ruckus, and Risa gets really mad at her. And I mean really mad. Shut up! Oh. 
And well, the fake dating doesn't go super well with Risei because a lot of people get jealous. So we try fake dating Ayaka, and that doesn't go too well either. And then Chiho, and the Chiho date finally gets some good results. Because, you know, childhood friends. And oh boy, Risei gets really jealous about this. <laughs> hey girl, calm down. Remember, I bought you some manga earlier. And in the next chapter, the White Lotus Society is trying to figure out how to advertise the 97th Academy Bell Festival. Risei manages to get an ad in a local paper, but we have to create one by tomorrow morning. And we have to use a software called Illustrop? Is that just Photoshop and Illustrator combined or something in this world? I don't know. So we end up pulling an all-nighter to get it done in time. But it turns out to be a big success, as we get a lot of outsiders attending the festival. One thing though is the headmistress made a deal with Risei that the festival could be open to the public, but if any trouble were to happen, then Risei would no longer be the leader of the White Lily Society. And look who just happens to show up at the festival. I don't think they're here to spread joy to everyone. And they end up coming to our class's cafe and scare all the customers off. And yeah, they treat Risei and I as well as the other students like absolute crap. And then the porcupine dude puts something in his food and says that we were trying to poison him. Risei denies this because clearly he's lying. And Messiah is trying his best not to cause a scene because he's worried that he will affect Risei's future as the leader of the White Lily Society. But when Porcupine Dude says an awful comment on Risei, Messiah goes full One Punch Man mode on him. Punch! And this leads to Risei and Messiah getting into trouble. However, Risei makes a comment about the headmistress that makes her slap her in the face, which shocks everyone. And the headmistress says she'll ignore the trouble that was caused today. Which, yeah, is nice because Risei still gets to keep her job, but wow, that slap hurts. But Risei and I still get to enjoy the rest of the festival together. Wait, someone sent these guys here? Huh, that's weird. Also, how the heck are they not arrested yet? In the next chapter, though, things get a little sad. Chiyo ends up quitting the White Lily Society. One of the reasons being that she's jealous of Risei and Masai's romantic relationship, and the other being she thinks Risei is hiding something from everybody. And when we have our meeting later, Risei confirms that there is something she is hiding. But she wants to wait until after the athletics festival before telling anybody what it is. As of now, the gang wants to get ready for the athletics festival and wants to have it open to the public. We come up with an idea to run a marathon down a public street. However, in order to pull this off, we need to get some signatures from the people who live around here so that they'll be okay with this. And even though it takes us a few days, we manage to get them signatures and are able to run the marathon here. Also, in this chapter, we get to learn more about Messiah and Chio's relationship as kids, which is very heartwarming. But later, when we try to apologize to Chiho about we're not going with her to the festival back in the day, she gets really upset with us. And it's pretty heartbreaking, not gonna lie. The next chapter is also a pretty short one. It has Risei and Messiah finally confess their love to each other, which was so sweet. Risei also reveals in this chapter what she was hiding from us. Turns out the reason why she wanted the school to reform was because her mother was an ex-student that went completely insane after she graduated. She refused to accept the fact that she had graduated from Vasanas and had a child. And she's been in a mental hospital for a long while now. Risei wants to change the school to show her mother that it is not the same school that it was back in her day. She also tells a story on why her mother went crazy during the night at the festival when I met Risei back in the day. Now, I don't want to go too in-depth with describing the backstory because there's a lot to take in, but just know that Risei's mom is in a local hospital right now. At the beginning of the next chapter, we tag along with Risei and her grandma to meet her mother at the hospital. And yeah, she still believes she's a student at the school and is only in the hospital for health reasons. Sheesh, she really is a crazy one, huh? And when she sees me, she doesn't act very friendly at all. Get the fuck out of here. And later when we leave the hospital, she apparently calls up the headmistress at Vasanas, who was her friend, and says she's coming back to the school on Chante Noel. Oh boy, this won't end well. And in case you're wondering, Chante Noel is a special Christmas ceremony where lovers exchange rosaries amongst themselves. And Risa and Messiah plan to exchange rosaries to show everyone their true feelings. Heck, even Chio ends up supporting us and ends up rejoining the White Lily Society. Hooray! Also, did they really just make a KFC Christmas joke here? I'm not playing that dating sim, I'm playing this one! Although I do miss seeing Van Van. Hello, 911 emergency. There's a handsome guy in my house. Oh, <laughs> wait a second, cancel that. It's only me. Risa and I plan to kiss on the night of Chante Noel, and Risa gets so excited about this that she gets really horny imagining the scene at night and she ends up not sleeping very much at all. This game really likes making me blush. The White Lily Society also plans to sing during the event, but the headmistress doesn't want Messiah to participate because of Risei's mom attending. Yeah, here we finally find out that the reason why the headmistress keeps wanting to stop the school 
performing is because she's scared of what her ex-friend will do if she finds out that a boy is attending Boston Ops. And yeah, later that night when she finds out, she definitely isn't happy about it. But Messiah and Risa exchange rosaries and share a passionate kiss with each other. Isn't that cute? To be honest, with the next chapter, not much happens story-wise, but in a nutshell, Messiah and Risa are spending Christmas together at the school and can't stop making out with each other. They also take a bath together and even do some... not safe for Lil' Timmy stuff. Oh my gosh, how dare they watch High Guardian Spice! Lil' Timmy hates that! In the next chapter, we actually get to meet Risa's father. Unfortunately, we don't get to see his face, which is a bit of a letdown, but if I were to guess, I'm betting he looks like this. Risa and I also go to a shrine together, but the trip doesn't last very long and is a little anticlimactic, not gonna lie. Hey, so where's the shrine at? This is the shrine, dude. Yippee! Now we're close to the end of this game, which means the grand boat is approaching, and our boats are still not a majority boat, so there's still a chance that I might not be around for next year. But before we can start planning our next move, Risa comes over one night, says that her grandmother, aka the chairwoman, has been taken to the hospital. Risa and I immediately head over there and run into some police officers who say that she's been stabbed several times. And yeah, in the next chapter we visit the chairwoman in the hospital, and she confirms that it was Risa's mother who stabbed her. Yeah, that's not very surprising. We also find out that Risa's mom never went back to the hospital, so we try to find her. Risa believes her mother would go to the spot where the shrine from earlier was burned down, but we still don't find her there. And Risa starts becoming depressed because he still wants to see her mother and speak with her before it's too late. At this rate, we'll probably end up losing in the grand boat, but thankfully, Mitsuki encourages her to keep fighting on. And while it turns out, the headmistress is the one keeping Risa's mom at her house. Risa and I sneak out one night to see if it's true and end up running into Risa's mom, who ends up stabbing Messiah, and he starts bleeding a lot. Risa and the headmistress want to bring him to the hospital, but he says he wants to go with Risa while she speaks to her mother. And we finally get to see Risa and her mother share a special moment together. Risa's mom finally accepts the fact that she graduated from Boston Oz and she accepts that Risa is her daughter and she loves her. It's a very tearful and heartwarming moment. But then Messiah passes out from blood loss and we're on to the final chapter of the game. Messiah is in critical condition, but the doctor says he'll pull through. The other girls come to the hospital to see what happened, but Risa tells them the whole story. Risa wants to stay at the hospital until Messiah is all better, but the girl says that she needs to come back to the school to give her speech on why she wants the school to reform. She refuses at first, but Chiyo says that Messiah would want her to go. So she goes to school and tells everyone about the story of her mother and what happened to Messiah. And after that, she immediately runs back to the hospital to be by Messiah's side. Seriously. This game's making me tear up. Do something funny, quick! Ha. Funny. When Risa arrives back at the hospital, along with everyone else, they find out Messiah has been transported to a new room, and find him in his new room with a handkerchief on his head, and everyone believes that he's dead. But don't worry guys, Messiah has plot armor like any anime protagonist, and is in fact still alive. And everyone is relieved and really happy. And so, Messiah goes back to the school the next day, Risa becomes a new student council president, and the grand vote happens, and well, we did it. We pass the vote, and the school will become a co-ed school. Risa's mom ends up turning herself in, and will serve some jail time, but Risa plans to continue visiting her to continue their mother-daughter relationship. And the game ends with Risa and Messiah confessing their love one last time, and making plans for the futures together. And well, there you have it guys, that was Princess Evangel. Now like I said earlier, there's other routes you can do in this game to get different endings. Nine routes in total, but I'd be here forever if I went over what happens in each and every route, but I'm still happy with the Risa route overall. In the end, I thought this game was great. It has great characters, a beautiful storyline, and the developers really did a good job in making you really feel like you were in Messiah's shoes. Yeah, this game was really long, and as you can see, this review is also my longest review video ever made right now, but the game kept me entertained the entire way through. So overall, I'd say, Princess of Angel is an amazing visual novel that I recommend to anybody. So yeah, overall, Princess of Angel is a really awesome game that I enjoyed all the way to the very end. The game also taught me a valuable lesson. I don't need to make my very own visual novel or game sim to be happy. No, true happiness comes from playing games like these and make you feel really happy and enjoy life. Okay, who am I kidding? Can someone please buy my dating sim game? Anyone? I hate Valentine's Day.